Okay, so timeline. There is so, so, so much to talk about on the timeline. I'm going to try and uh, briefly go over what you need to know to start editing, and then uh, uh, we'll come back to it later in these lessons. So um, again, I'll reiterate, uh, what's on your timeline is your final project. And there's a lot of basic tools and stuff that you need to know. Uh, controls on the timeline work exactly the same as anywhere else in Premiere. You can cl click on this playhead and drag it around. You can also hit spacebar to play, uh, uh, J, K, and L to fast forward and rewind. First thing I'm going to talk about is all these buttons happening over here. Um, over here on the left side are these little locks. Uh, I can click on that and that'll lock a track for me. Uh, each one of these things is called a track. So uh, V1, V2, V3 is video track 1, video track 2, video track 3, same with audio, audio track 1, audio track 2, audio track 3. Uh, video only goes up on this half and audio only goes down on this half. So if I click on that little lock, uh, middle lock everything on video track one so I can't move it anymore. I can't move it. I can't change anything about it. It's permanently in that spot. Uh, however, audio track uh, one is not locked so I can click on that and move it around. Um, if I lock them both, I can't move either. If I only lock audio track one, I can move the video but not the audio. Uh, locks are, are very convenient for songs. Oftentimes you find a song and want to lay that down onto your timeline um, and then uh, have it not move or be cut up or anything like that. So if I take my promo music over here, uh, the uh, green icon means audio. The purple icon looks kind of like a film strip is video. And if you see both, uh, like in this one, it's got audio and video in the same clip. Okay, so because the only thing I see here is green audio waveforms, I know all, that the only thing that is is audio, so I can take that and drag it onto my timeline. I'm just going to put it on track four so it's kind of out of the way. And then I can lock that in place so it doesn't ever get moved and it doesn't screw up my editing to the beat of the music and, and all that stuff. Over here on the right is this little picture of an eyeball. Uh, that will it's called a toggle track output. Uh, basically, it makes the it makes that track invisible. So if I click on the eyeball, and now there's a little blue slash through it. Uh, now I can't see anything on that track. Uh, but if I take that video and move it up to track two, it's back. That can be useful if you're trying different things. And then uh, uh, when you're using these tracks, I'm going to go ahead and grab another clip of video here to, just to test. So this is more of an over the shoulder of her pointing at a painting, uh, kind of a jump cut because it's it's a different painting. But I'm going to go ahead and take that and bring that down under my timeline. When I bring a clip down on under my timeline, I'm not touching anything else on the keyboard. I'm just taking that and if if I place that on top of a clip that's already on the timeline, uh, that's called an overwrite edit. Um, and you can actually see my little arrow there. That little blue arrow is pointing down and saying it's going to overwrite everything that's under this clip. So when I let go, it'll delete everything that was under the clip as I drop it. That's usually not what I want to do. Just bring a clip down and put it on top of my other clips and steamroll everything that was already on my timeline. If instead I bring a clip down and put it in the empty space next to a clip, it doesn't affect my other clips at all because I dropped it in that empty space. One other convenient thing to, to do though is if you drag that down and then let's say I actually want this clip in front of my first clip. A uh, long way to, to do that would be to uh, click and drag and highlight these for, and uh, lasso around them drag this out, take this clip, put it down on the timeline, and then bring this back. Um, I can do that in one step. If I dr drag this down, put it in front, and then press and hold the command key. And you see the front of my clip becomes all these little arrows. Now if while I'm holding command I let go of my mouse, it'll do an insert edit. And what an insert edit does is it says, okay, I'm going to put that clip right there where you wanted me to put it, and then I'm going to push everything else out of the way. That's a tool I use a ton uh, when I realize, oh, actually, 
uh, that clip is supposed to go in here. Um, or maybe it's in the middle of your edit, or maybe it's a piece that goes in between two parts of the same shot. I could do an insert edit, you know, take this clip and put it directly in the middle of this shot I already have on my timeline. If I just press and hold command, and now it's not going to overwrite, it's going to create a cut and push everything else out of the way. The other thing I wanted you to know about tracks is that uh, whatever you have on video track two or three or you know, et cetera, uh, whatever the top track is, is what is going to be seen in your program window. So if I take this clip and instead of putting it on top of my clip and doing an overwrite edit, I'm going to just put it on track two. Okay, now my clip is still down there, but it'll actually only show me the clip on top because it's my top layer. And that could be where my eyeball comes in handy. So if I'm trying different things, I'm like, no, nah, I don't think that looked that good. Let's see what it looked like before. I can just turn off this eyeball and play it again. And because now this track is invisible, I can see track one. Okay, a couple other tools you have up here. You've got snapping. Snapping is what allows me to take this clip and watch as I take it and I get close to the edge of this other clip. It'll kind of snap into place exactly. It just kind of makes that jump. Uh, snapping is super useful. Uh, most of the time you want to have it on. The keyboard shortcut for it is S. So if I hit S, it turns off. You can see it's not blue anymore. Press S again, it turns back on. And then the other thing I want you to know about is right beside that, and that's called linked selection. I mean, the link selection is off right now, which means that if I click on the video half of my clip, it will separate the audio and video so that the two of them aren't in sync anymore, which is what this uh, number means here. So this is saying that my video starts one second after the audio starts, and this is saying my audio starts one second before my video starts. Link selection is something you're probably going to want to have on almost all the time, because especially if you're using the audio in a clip and you want it synced up with that video, you definitely don't want it getting out of sync. Most of the time when I turn it off, it's to delete audio, or maybe I'm uh, doing a special different kind of edit. A couple of other things on the timeline. You can create transitions. The easiest way to do that is the most basic transition, which is called a cross dissolve. And I can create that by taking my mouse and right clicking on that edit point and clicking apply default transition. And that'll add, you can see it added a cross dissolve on my audio and my video here. So now when I play it, it'll actually fade from one clip into the other. Okay, uh, video transitions also live in your effects tab under video transitions. And if I go to dissolve, you can see that cross dissolve is right there. And it's highlighted in blue because it's my default transition. So I could change that default transition if I wanted to by right clicking and changing it. Personally, I like to keep it on cross dissolve. It's my, my most common transition and it works really well. Um, you know, don't play with too many of these uh, of the other ones like an iris box. Uh, because these transitions are just kind of cheesy. And something else I wanted to show you is how to trim a clip. If you take your cursor to the edge of a clip and then I drag that in, uh, what that's doing, and you can actually see it up in my program window, is it's changing the end point of my clip. So let's say I, you know, I, I got the clip, I bring in the source window, I think I want to start it here, I think I want to end it here, uh, but it turns out I bring it on my timeline and it doesn't quite match up correctly and I just want to make another small adjustment. I can do that on, on the timeline and just click on the edge and pull that in and change the endpoint again. Same thing here, right? I can just click on the edge, change the endpoint, and then drag it back. Something else that you might notice over here on the right side, these are my audio levels. So if I hit play, these will actually pop up. You can't hear anything right now because I don't have my speakers on, but that's uh, telling me how loud my audio is. So right now it's up. Uh, just above negative six decibels is where it's peaking. That's the top end. Generally, keep your audio levels at or around negative six. That does not mean it can't go higher than negative six. It does not mean it can't be 
you know, down here at negative 12 or, or 15 at times, but it's just kind of a base setting or base rule. Keep it at negative six. That's, it's loud enough that it's not peaking and it's not too quiet. It's kind of the sweet spot. What you're trying to avoid with your audio is if I just turn this up, whoops, if I just turn this up, okay, now it's up here at zero and peaking. I have these red bars. You don't want that because if you export it out, even if it sounds okay in Premiere, if it's peaking, you're going to export that out and play it on a different sound system and it's going to crackle and sound really bad. So keep things out of the peaking. To change your audio level, the first thing you have to do is expand out a track. Two ways to do that, you can take your cursor and bring it over a track and drag it down and that'll expand it or make it bigger. Or you can take your cursor, put it in this empty space in between these buttons and the actual timeline and scroll and that'll expand and contract it. Well, once you've expanded it out, you should see a little white line in the middle of your track and that's your audio levels. So if I take my cursor, you can see it changes right there when I'm on the middle and I can increase that to turn it up and decrease to turn it down. This was pretty happy at zero, so I'm gonna leave it there. If you expand out your track and you can't see that that little line, come up here and click on the little yellow FX button, or right click on it, I'm sorry. Go to volume and click on level. Uh, but I think it's always there. Uh, that's it for the timeline. Next video, I'm going to go into all these other tools that you see over here on the left. Not all of them, but a few of them. And talk about how to use those.